This section heading is called PHP SQL Query Process. So now inside of chapter two, what we're essentially doing is we're taking the whole login process and chopping it up into two components. We saw in the previous section that we described how we retrieved data from these two input fields over here and stored that data inside of two variables on the server. So what we're going to do in this section here is we're going to explain how that data that's stored within those variables is used to authenticate users. So now the magic behind this whole process is outlined within our action script. So we already have that file opened up. We just got to go to the terminal. So now inside the terminal, I'm going to review the code. So the first bunch of lines in here, what we're doing is we're defining variables. Now what we do with variables is we essentially store stuff in them. So what we're doing with this first variable over here is we're storing the string localhost inside the variable name called host. So we're going to take these defined variables and we're going to use them throughout our script. Now at the end or appended to this PHP statement where we define that variable, we're actually adding a comment. So we can see over here the double forward slash is used to add a comment on a single line, which can happen at the end of the line or at the beginning of the line as we see over here. So now on the next line, we're seeing a PHP function. And again, most of your PHP functions are going to follow the typical construct for a function where it has an intuitive name that helps to describe the function's purpose and then an open bracket and a close bracket. So now we can see as arguments to this function, we're using the variables that we defined up above. So if we go by the function's name, we're attempting to establish a connection to MySQL from this PHP script using the following arguments. Now, if we cannot establish a connection to MySQL, then what we're going to do is we're going to use this function over here. So this function kind of has two parts. It means to exit the program and then print to the screen, cannot connect. So now if we go down to the next function over here, again, going by its intuitive name. So we're looking to select a MySQL database. And again, we're using a variable as an argument. So we're looking to select SiteAuth as the database. And once again, if we cannot select that database, then what we're going to do is exit the program and then print to the screen. So now if you can recall when we did our installations, I said that one of the modules was going to give us the capability to establish connections from PHP scripts down to a MySQL database. So essentially that's what we're doing right here. Now we can see that PHP is doing it on this side and we also seen in the previous section, and again, I'm referring to this image in the background. I don't know if you can see that. And we saw in the previous section how we were able to use the post function to reference data that we wanted to retrieve via the HTTP post method. So we're taking that data that we retrieve and we're storing that into two variables, one for the username input field and one for the password input field. Once we store that data, then we're going to go down and we're going to pass these down to a query statement. So we're formulating a query statement right here. And we can see those variables, my username and my password are right here. We can also see another variable over here called table name. So this right here is interpreted, even though we're writing it in PHP, this is going to be interpreted as SQL syntax by the MySQL server. So we're selecting all columns and all rows from the auth users database table. We're using a where clause to select specific criterion. And we're saying where the username in the username column matches what we retrieved via the username input field and the password from the password column matches what we retrieve from the password input field. So we're taking all of this and we're storing this inside of a variable called SQL. We're then passing this as an argument to the MySQL query function. So you can see in the background here, we're actually issuing that query and then we're getting the results and we're storing it in a variable name called result. 
we're then taking this variable and passing this as an argument to this function. So what we're doing right here is we're looking to see if the count is not zero, meaning that we did match a username password combination within that table. So if we did, then what we're going to do is we're going to redirect them to login success.php. And if you can recall, this is the second script that we added when we dragged over or transferred over our action script. So this is where we're going to direct users that successfully authenticate. And then users that do not, we're simply just going to echo to the screen, wrong username or password.